Well, we're out here by Gardner Canyon. Not in Gardner Canyon, but down the road from it a little bit. And somebody was telling me about these trapdoor spiders the other day. This one's a male, obviously. Didn't expect that I would ever see any while I was out here, but here we are. Good sized male trapdoor spider. That is a really beautiful species. And because I don't know if there's any chance I will ever see one of these again, and because people who identify such things often want the males, I'm going to collect it. Bombardier beetle. If you see it, see it give me a little puff. There it is. See? Some of you will have seen my spider video last week. I did a documentary about the spiders here in the Pacific Northwest, at least ones that occur in my neighborhood here. For those of you who may be new to this channel, uh, I'm Peter Clausen and I run a website called bugsincyberspace.com. Put that website up in 1997. And I've spent a lot of time the last year or so working on these YouTube videos. And I wanted to put out a trapdoor spider video for a while now. And I was lucky enough very recently to have the opportunity to acquire some specimens of what are supposedly the largest trapdoor species in the United States, a species from Texas. And we'll take a look at them a little bit later in this video. I sent one of them off uh, when I had found out that I was getting them. Uh, there's a YouTuber that I've been watching for a while. His name is Richard Stewart, and he has a YouTube channel called The Tarantula Collective. And I really enjoy watching his videos. If you like spiders, arachnids, um, and tarantulas in particular, I highly recommend you go and check his channel out. And I looked through his content and I didn't see that he had a trapdoor spider video. And so in the spirit of collaboration, I contacted him and I asked him if he would like to, for me to send him a few of them so that he could make a video about them. He sent me these things and um, one of these for myself, it's a The Tarantula Collective Mask and uh, I will wear this every single time I go out now, as you can see here. Just finishing up the grocery shop in here. This mask is from Richard from Tarantula Collective. Love that little cart thing. So much fun. And he was nice enough to send one that I'm going to give out as part of a contest we're doing, along with some other swag here. We've got a bracelet that says Tarantula Collective, a couple stickers, and a real nice solid heavy duty pin here. And so anybody who comments down below in this video, you're going to have the opportunity through a random comment picker to win some prizes. So I'm going to, as we move through the video, introduce some different clips about the various uh, spiders that I've kept. Um, I think I have footage here of a half dozen or so different trapdoor spider species. And we are also going to uh, go on a walk at night through my neighborhood, and I'm going to show you the habitat that my local ones, the folding trapdoor spiders, Antrodea edis pacificus, live in. And then finally, we're going to do a really brief uh, container setup uh, so that you guys, I, this is the video that I've wanted to make for a really long time. This clip is probably well over a decade old now, and it's of a black African trapdoor spider species. At the time, 
I have no idea what it, what it was even sent to me as in terms of the um, species. The species has probably changed since then anyway, or it was incorrectly identified. Many of the spiders that came into the hobby back in the late 90s and in the early 2000s um, were later changed, their names changed to something else, or they were found to be something other than what they were thought to be. And so this is uh, a clip of a black African trapdoor spider feeding on a cricket. Now I've had the red ones as well from Africa and they're all very large impressive spiders and um, you will find that um, they use their front legs to quickly pull the prey to their, um, to their fangs, uh, their chelicery, and uh, they don't waste any time. They rely on their strength quite a bit to hold their prey, if not so much their venom. In this next clip, we take a look at a species from California called Pro Mira Kia Fia Clothrata. And the reason that I'm rather good at saying that is because at one time on my Instagram channel, I throat sang those words. I had been listening to a musical group called The Hue out of Mongolia, I think, and they were throat singing in their videos. And in learning how to spell the name of that species, I thought it might be fun to throat sing it. And so uh, after a brief clip, you will then hear me uh, throat singing that, which later I did a contest on Instagram where I asked people to send me a uh, clip of them throat singing those same words. And I had a contest and uh, gave away a prize and it was a lot of fun. And then in a follow-up clip, you will see Jessica, an arachnologist who works for me here at Bugs in Cyberspace, uh, also making her attempt at singing the name of another California species, uh, Alliotypes, I think was the genus on it. So please enjoy those clips. So this is a wafer lid trapdoor spider. Species comes from California. This one appears to be missing a leg, but it's a good sized spider. You wouldn't normally see this spider out walking around. You might see if you were outside males wandering at night, but this is a female. She's a big bulky spider. She's in the same subgroup as tarantulas the mygalomorphs, and so she's not like the other spiders that you see that build orb webs or that you might see in your house. Little weak at the end there. We've got some other trapdoor spiders too. This one here is Alliotypus californicus. I can actually see the animal right there below its little trapdoor lid that it's built amazingly out of paper towel. You can see the abdomen of the spider. I like to call it the butt. Spider butt. Booty. <laughs> Alliotypus californicus. <laughs> In this next clip, you'll see what I believe is the largest trapdoor spider species here in the United States. It's called the Southwestern Trapdoor Spider, Eutenaza relata. Jessica, being an arachnologist, uh, she went to PSU where she studied under Susan Masta and worked in the arachnid lab, did lots of research, a treasure trove of information about arachnids, and completely unafraid to hold anything. I've 
seen her hold black widows, brown recluses, uh, various trapdoor spider species. Um, she's fearless. Uh, she wants to believe that no spider is ever going to bite her. And up to this point, and, and also like myself, I have never been bitten by a spider that um, I could prove or that I saw bite me. I've had some strange little bumps on my body at one time or another, but didn't see that a spider bit me. So can't blame a spider for that. Well, she, I always have to tell her, clock out before you go and hold that thing. Um, in this case, uh, you will see her handling uh, Brienne of Tarth, who we ended up sending to Richard. So on there like that, because if I agitated her, right. then um, she it was good. It would have, her bite would have gone right through your skinny little fingers. Yeah. <laughs> you want to move a little? There you go. In this next clip, you'll see a purse web spider, Sphodros abbotty, Abbott's purse web spider. They build really interesting tunnels uh, up the sides of trees. And so there'll be this silken tunnel that goes up the sides of the tree, kind of looks like the, the sheath that a knife would go in maybe. Um, and then there will be generally, I think under the ground, another tube that is more disguised. Um, I didn't dig this one out because of the really cool structure that it was starting to build in this new tank that we had temporarily put it in. Um, I do hope to add in some real dirt into that container here and uh, give it real proper building materials to build an even neater web. Also, that piece of choya will probably mold over time if we put the required amount of humidity uh, into the tank had this purse web spider and it was in a smaller container and Jessica moved it out into this recently just to give it some space and she was just showing me the amazing thing it did in here and I kept looking into the substrate because I thought that's what she was pointing at but then she showed me their characteristic tube right up there against the bit of choya wood can see it right there and it's picked up little pieces of the coconut fiber substrate which I think I'll add in some regular dirt and uh, lined this tunnel that's running up just like they do in nature against trees running up the side of the choya. So cool. Had no idea did you think it would do that, Jessica? Is that why you put the stick in there? I was hoping it would, yeah. That's so cool. Because it was already building a tube inside the smaller container, you know, of trying to. Uh-huh. There's the old silken tube it was in. Most people, if they do encounter one of our Pacific Northwest folding door trapdoor spiders, it's likely to be a male. The males do wander out in the late summer months, early fall. Maybe for a month or so, they'll be crawling around looking for the burrows of females. And in this next clip, you'll see one of those males. One of the really cool things about them is the little sclerotization on the abdomen, um, those dark spots sort of hardened, almost like armored plates. There was a species or a genus called Lephistius that I used to occasionally get specimens of. I think they were from Malaysia. And um, they're one of those sort of relic type spiders that actually had um, little plated segments covering the abdomen. Very cool species. And I wish I had a clip to share with you guys from back when I had them. All right, now we're getting up to the water. That came up quickly. Trail just had to turn in the right direction. Oh, what do we have here? Oh wow, is that a oh. trapdoor male? Yeah. 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 Is it alive? Yeah, yep. it's alive. I love those uh, sclerotized bits on the abdomen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's plates. I, like it, sure. I know. 
Good, good, uh, good stop on that one. Yep. I thought it was just going to be a fallen piece of lichen like this, but no. Now we come to the part of the video where I take you guys with me and Jesse and Courtney as we go out and explore a local park and look for the folding door trapdoor spiders that are extremely common here locally. Many of uh, the residents here in the Pacific Northwest where these spiders live have no idea that these spiders even exist because they have very secretive habits. You won't notice them during the day. You might see little holes in the ground if you're looking very carefully, but the spiders will be uh, retracted back down into their burrows. Only if you're going out at night with a flashlight or a headlamp, and probably only if you know that they even exist are you going to be able to find them. About the folding trapdoors? Yeah, I'd like to find some of their burrows tonight. There's this one spot in particular that I wanna go check out. Um, there's this one tree where there's like 20 of them behind it in the ground. What is it? Gotta oh, love weevil. weevils. It's a pretty cool weevil over here, honey. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like ones we've seen before, but he's a little bit bigger than the usual ones. Tyler Bullis, millipedes, out exploring. Leopard slug. Oh, and there, the first good-sized folding door trapdoor spider of the night. Just looking right at us. Hey, you the, us up. the light often scares them back into their burrows. And now it has just gone back down its burrow. It was up there at the entrance can see and imagine them folding the two flaps of that door together. And that burrow probably extends way deep down in there, so it's not going to come running out at me or anything. Oh man, that's a good shot right there. Got two things. Not only is there a very large trapdoor spider there, there's a Harpaphy Haydeniana right there too. Look at that. Look at the size of that trapdoor there, oh, though. Oh, that is a monster. Just waiting. Yep. Just waiting. Go for it, man. All right, here, you take this. And then I need something. I'm going to try not to shine the light directly at it anymore because yeah. it'll go booking. So they often build. Into these bigger. embankments. Salamander, Salamander right there. Yeah. Little little red guy hiding in there. Oh yeah, little red right back. Alright. Uh uh uh. We don't usually see them that big. Yeah, I can see that one's eyes from here. Survey says, you think you got it? I know I got it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's so Beast. big. Beast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Those are just some of the ugliest looking spiders. <laughs> Just you gotta respect that animal though. I mean to be that ugly. Oh, yeah. these are just amazing. Mm -hmm. Just just for it to be here in the Pacific Northwest and to lead such a secretive life and nobody right. even knows about them. I feel like I would like it better if it had hair like tarantulas. It be we could that's make them so we interesting. Could put a toupee on it, Courtney. Sure. Right. You got one tiny enough? <laughs> I'm sure we could make some that of these. That's amazing. <laughs> I wow. just I just gave myself a haircut earlier today. It's all over my sink. I haven't cleaned it up yet, actually. <laughs> a little shit we could, in there. We could work with that. He's got some a nice little orange stripe on him, doesn't he? Do you got three millipedes there? <laughs> so let's take a look at this burrow it was in here. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? That yeah. one millipede's gonna take a scooty boot away. I know. And uh, there's the closing mechanism there. 
And you saw that on one of our recent trips out here. You saw one just grab the two purse mm -hmm. strings and I just did. go. Whoosh, it was so cool because I'd actually right never up. really seen that before. I don't think I've ever seen it before, but you had described it. And I was like, wait a minute, it actually worked. <laughs> it's like, close it off. Silk is very thick, but I'm able to uh, tear it rather easily. Um, will you move the spider a little bit more towards me so it's facing me so I can check it out? Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. All right. Those bristly little legs kind of reminds me a little bit of that mole cricket that you brought over. Oh, it totally. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming that they're just so perfectly designed like that for digging. Yeah. Mm. All stocky and bulky. They sure are. It's amazing. They just spend their whole lives down there and they can live for 20 years. 20 years. Yep. These females. Maybe we'll see a male out wandering tonight. Oh, remember that cool. blue one we saw in Arizona? Oh man, yeah, I do remember. I'm that gonna very put that. Well. I'm gonna put that in this video too. Well, let's pop this one back down into its burrow. For a little while here, I think I found my tree over here. I'm gonna try to sneak up on it without scaring them all away. And I'm going to shine the light on it very quickly. So, yep, I can see that little pocket right there. Lots of little holes. I check on these ones every time when I come over here. And uh, before I shine the light on, they'll all retreat into their burrows. But you can see that this side here and over here there are lots and lots of them there I guess the buttresses of this did you just say buttresses yeah how do you like that word buttresses. I saw your buttresses hanging out earlier when how you were you taking salamander I've pictures been for you to notice this is when you put the Sir mix -a lot video on the background. <laughs> Understand oh. and feel the gimbal. You know it's there. Become one with the gimbal. One with the gimbal. That's a good size. Colobius Severus. And then Jazzercise. Hey. And then just sometimes right out in the open like this. And it popped back down. Here's another one here. Put my finger near it so that you can see how they retract the safety of their burrows. Well, we missed seeing the spider here, but this is a really good example of how these burrows close up. You can imagine it raining or something and it'll just pull it together like that. Can't even see. There at the base of the tree I actually thought it was wood but what it has done and we'll do this very carefully so it's not to disturb it but it's pulled little bits of dirt and debris now, actually, the spider is uh, kind of teasing it out a little bit here. It felt me just very gently playing around with the opening of its burrow. And uh, that was gathering its interest. So it thinks that I might be food. So it's going to come right up here to the edge and uh, give these tongs a little taste or perhaps it will close the entrance there you go see that 
good example of the strike. And then I think it pulled its own burrow shut just after that. This one's pretty bold. Uh, anyway, I'll just leave that alone. Thank you for sharing your time with us there, friend. Demonstrate another element of their behavior that we wouldn't otherwise have seen. So sometimes we see these other burrows down here, these perfectly round ones. And down in there, we won't probably be able to get the angle on it, but there's a tiger beetle down in there. I saw it just before it poked its head back down, head capsule. Now there's a head capsule, it just poked it down right there. And then this one right here, it's not quite as round and there's a trapdoor spider in that one. Now there's a really, really good example of one right there. Almost never see them out that far. That there, the omis that we saw earlier, that tiger beetle, that's the larva, the head capsule, and the mandibles. Saw just how quickly it retracted into its burrow. Pretty neat thing to see. Always part of the experience of coming out and looking at all of these things here. Another good shot of a tiger beetle head capsule there. And then if I just touch the ground there, so it retract deeper down into its hole. That's a great shot too, sprawled out. Yep. Just, just modeling there. Wish I didn't have that millipede secretion. Right there. <laughs> Looks like a big spider. It does, doesn't it's it? It's gorgeous. All right, oh, there right it is. There yep. in the moss, right in the side of a tree. That's a cool habitat. Nice to document one of the other places we see them. And I'm about to fall over because really unsteady there, but. Check that out. That's a very neat spot for one. Moss growing up the side of a big leaf maple. In the next few clips, we're going to source some materials for putting a trapdoor spider tank together. This probably works for most any trapdoor spider species, although depending on where it comes from, you may need to make the substrate more or less humid. Um, they are all burrowing animals though, and so I would generally recommend that you do add some moisture to the soil if you see that it's getting a little bit too much on the dry side. Um, a general indicator for how much is too much, um, if you can push the soil into a clump, and if it retains its shape, for example, if you pressed it into a spoon maybe, and um, then sort of dumped it out a little bit, if it sort of retained that spoon shape, that's probably the correct moisture level, versus if it were to crumble apart, um, that would be an indicator that it were too dry. If you see the one clip in the video where there was coconut fiber down on the bottom, you probably noticed that the bottom portion of the coconut fiber was darker and it was more moist. Well, in both cases, coconut fiber is definitely not a suitable kind of substrate for trapdoor spiders. All right, so I came out here to dig up some of the proper soil to show you guys something kind of compact and clay-based. Looks like there is a tiger beetle hole right there. Just dig there anyway, we probably won't see it, but I'm going to get this nice dense soil because we're going to compact it into our container. See how it's almost kind of 
shiny there. The way it looks. Clay will have that quality. And I'm not gonna take too much of this. We're just going to demonstrate. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this moss here too. Only because it looks cool. So you're not gonna see a great display tank on this channel today. I'm going to show you a bare bones setup. Standard 32 ounce deli cup here. Got the soil that I gathered from around the corner. Clay-based soil. Compacts very, very nicely. Um, here was that example of a hole that a tiger beetle had uh, burrowed through. So you can see that it maintains its structure very well. Really compacts down, but you know, I can pinch it like this and it's got enough moisture in it that it somewhat holds its shape. So what I'm gonna do, depends on the size of your spider, what size the container you need to have for it is. I'm going to fill this up here with a bunch of the soil and when I'm making tanks that include substrate, I'm always thinking about the ratio of substrate to airspace remaining in the tank. And it's always in terms of height. And I do like to have a little bit of room at the top just so I can drop, you know, the cricket or whatever in there. And that prey item is not going to be able to jump out. Have a little stick in there. One other thing I'm going to do here is poke this pen right down here against the side of the container. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm suggesting a place where I want the spider to burrow. And I prefer it, over the years I've experimented with a few different ways of doing this, I always love it when the spider chooses to build its home up against the side wall of the tank. And the reason for that is because we can keep an eye on it. We can check on it, see if it's alive. And maybe if you're lucky, you can see the size of the abdomen, whether it's plump or starting to look a bit thin, which will indicate whether you need to feed it or not. Of course, you might be dropping prey items in there every couple of weeks. These spiders don't eat a lot or eat frequently. And of course, it depends on the size of the meal you're providing them as to how often they will need to eat but I'll tamp this down really hard against the base here and doing it in my hand isn't going to do as good of a job as if I do it this way. Like I said, nice to be able to see what they're up to down there. And I chose this particular pen size, not because I'm going to actually put a spider in here. I'm just demonstrating how to set a tank up, but because Normally the spiders that I pass on to other people have a leg span that is appropriate for a hole this size. And the diameter of the hole, the diameter of the end of the pen here, is probably conducive to a spider with a leg span maybe one and a half to two times this right here because the spiders, they don't spread out when they're in the hole. They're actually in a uh, vertical position. Now, they may build a chamber at the bottom. Um, it's different, it depends. No, no two burrows are going to be exactly the same because the materials that they're building in in nature and here in captivity, because no two tanks are the same and more than likely no two substrates are going to be the same. Well, sometimes they encounter obstacles of one kind or another. Maybe the density of the soil isn't quite right. And so maybe they'll take a little bit of a turn in one direction or another. And so this suggestion of a burrow here is merely that. It's a suggestion. Now, if your spider ends up building a burrow somewhere else, um, it's best for the animal, of course, if you let it decide where it's going to build within the already limited options of a container like this. 
you can, of course, uh, dig it up and try to move it and resuggest another burrow. So you can see I've got a nice little tube in here. I've got this soil in here so compacted now. And um, actually, I do have a little bit of a slope there. I'm going to do even more of a slope because as you saw, this particular species, the folding door trapdoor spiders, they're building on embankments. And it may not be perfectly advisable for you to put it now here at the base of the slope. And so I will actually make a small adjustment here. I'm gonna put it over at the side of the slope to where there is a lower ground over there and a little bit of a slope that goes up to a higher point. And that's more for me than it is for the spider. The spiders really aren't too picky in nature. They probably choose their spots on the basis of a whole bunch of factors um, that have more to do, I would guess, with security for the spider um, than anything else. They want a place because they're going to be building a long-term habitat uh, uh, um, burrow that they're going to live in for their entire lives, perhaps. And since these spiders can live 20, 30, maybe even longer years, um, it's important that you give them something that at least you think is going to be uh, a happy home for them. And so I'm pretty happy with how I have that there. And I'm going to pull the pen out and put it back down a couple times and kind of tamp down that area a little bit more. I picked up some bits of moss while I was down there and I'm going to put a little bit of that in the cage there too. More for aesthetics, more just because I'm gonna like the way that looks. The spiders aren't necessarily too picky, like I said. You could actually keep them on a fairly shallow substrate and they would create a burrow of sorts. Of course, that's not ideal, but um, I've had them in containers like that for very long times uh, here and there. And um, they will still feed normally, um, maybe not normally in the sense that they're not bursting out of a, a burrow or something like that, but they will still take food. Um, many pet bugs are not too picky, like I said. So. I've got this in here. I'm just going to show you what this looks like right here. Um, the spider will web things down a little bit there in the burrow and make this a happier home. And so at this point, um, I'm probably going to widen the uh, top here out just a little bit, um, just so that the spider will feel more inclined to crawl down, not just into the slight depression, but then down into the hole below it again. Just a little thing that uh, observation I've made over the years about, you know, just watching spiders crawl into holes, I guess. I don't know. Oh, that's funny. There's a little pine cone in there. I didn't even know that. Well, I'll leave that in there. And so um, you may find that the spider comes over here underneath the moss and uh, starts a new burrow, and that's fine. Uh, you can always make some adjustments after the spider chooses where it wants to make its burrow. And hopefully between the two of you, you guys can sort of compromise on, on uh, where things are going to be. But that's basically it right there. You pop the lid on. Um, there's some moisture in this soil already. Um, I'll pull this loose stuff out on the top here just so you can see how much I've packed this down. Um, there's a little bit of loose stuff in there from under the moss, but you can see that it's, it's holding its shape there. This burrow over here is not going to collapse too easily, and that will give the spider enough of a start there to go in there, start laying some web down around the sides, reinforcing it so that it feels comfortable and so that it can have the right platform for launching itself out as a prey item comes near the burrow opening. And that's really about it. Moisten in there a little bit. Um, you could simply mist some areas. I would recommend a little bit away from the burrow. 
Um, depending on the lid you have, this one's highly ventilated, and so you would need to be adding a little bit more water or spraying in there a little bit more frequently than if this were a plastic lid with just a few pinholes poked into it or something. Um, containers like this, if you set them up correctly, they're not too likely to mold. So, um, you know, a few pinholes is probably just fine. There's plenty of air space in here. If you're opening this once every couple of weeks to add a prey item in like a cricket or a roach or something, mealworm, um, that's enough of an air transfer probably if there's just a few pinholes on the lid. Anyway, it's beginning to rain very heavily as it does here in this beautiful folding door, trapdoor spider habitat that I live in. There are probably thousands of them, no joke, thousands of them just in this little section that we're looking at here because there's a creek down at the bottom of the hill and there's embankments, slopes on both sides, and there are just spider holes everywhere. All through the Pacific Northwest, this species, Antrodiaetus pacificus, ranges. Please let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions about what we just looked at. And I'm going to get hey, out of the Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.